वेलकम फ्रेंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस डब्ल्यू एच आर्डन्स म्यूज डेस बॉक्स आर्ट्स सो दिस इज अ फ्रेंच टाइटल वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज अ लिटिल बिट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द इंग्लिश एंड द वेरी वर्ड म्यूज म्यूज मीन्स म्यूजियम सो म्यूज डे बॉक्स आर्ट्स सो दिस फ्रेज इन इंग्लिश मीन्स म्यूजियम ऑफ फाइन आर्ट्स सो इट्स ए फ्रेंच टर्म म्यूज डे बॉक्स आर्ट्स इट मीन्स म्यूजियम ऑफ फाइन आर्ट्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टूडे वी विल ट्राई टू नो दैट वाई आर्डन हैज गिवन सच काइंड ऑफ टाइटल It's a very famous poem by W. H. Arden. We will discuss briefly about Arden's biography. So Arden was born on 21st February 1901 in York, England, United Kingdom. And he was died on 29th September 1973 at the age of 66 in Vienna, Austria. and some of his famous poems are the shield of achilles the age of anxiety which has won the pulitzer prize and w h auden has written a lot of work with christopher isherwood and and some of the famous work written by them dog the dog beneath the screen or where is francis a play in three acts and the ascent of f6 this is a very famous play and this poem was written by w h auden in december 1938 while he was staying in brussels belgium with christopher isherwood it was first published under the title palais des box arts the place of fine arts later the title has been changed to muse de box arts this means museum of fine arts so the poem's title derives from the name of the museum Muses Rex des Beaux Arts de Belgique in Brussels this is actually the name of the museum where W H Auden and Isherwood visited when they were in Brussels in Belgium so the french name the, the name of the museum in english is the royal museum of fine arts of belgium so when w h auden and is isherwood visited that museum they noticed some paintings and those paintings some of those paintings moved w h auden so much that he had written a poem on those paintings he had mentioned peter brugel in his poem clearly so who is peter brugel peter brugel was the most significant artist of dutch and flemish renaissance painting a painter known for his landscape scenes and his famous painting is landscape with the fall of icarus so this painting this painting had transformed this painting transformed w h warden so much and he directly referred to this painting in his poem 
so this poem the fall of the icarus is a painting which is based on the mythology of icarus so first of all we will try to know that what is the mythology of icarus and who is icarus icarus is the son of daedalus in greek mythology Icarus is the son of the master craftsman Daedalus who built the labyrinth for King Minos and unfortunately King Minos imprisoned Icarus and Daedalus in that labyrinth Icarus and Daedalus attempt to escape from that labyrinth by means of wings that Daedalus constructs from feather and wax Daedalus warns Icarus, instructing him to fly neither too low nor too high, lest the sea's dampness clog his wings or the sun's heat melt them. Icarus ignores Daedalus's instructions not to fly too close to the sun, and Icarus, ignoring his father's direction, flies towards the sun and the extreme heat of sun melts down his wax wing and he tumbles out of the sky and falls into the sea and drowns so this is the mythology of icarus and if we try to discuss about the technical feature of this poem we may say that it is an ekphrastic poem so what is an ekphrastic poem so the very word ekphrastic means when an object of art describes another object of arts is known as ekphrastic poem so here we can see that this poem muses debox arts is actually describing about the painting about the painting which are in the museum so this is actually being one form of art that is poetry is trying to describe or giving a written description of another form of art that is painting so here poet poem this poem is actually trying to explain about the details of the painting so as this poem is trying to delineate about the features and the descriptions of the painting of peter bruegel so that's why this poem is considered as ekphrastic poem so we all know that kids has written a famous poem odes on a grecian urn as because kids's odes being a poem is describing the features and the descriptions of grecian art that's why the poem of kids is also known as a phrastic poem so ode to a grecian art is also known as a phrastic poem so a phrastic is a greek word for the written description of a work of art an ekphrastic poem is a vivid description of a scene or more commonly a work of art ekphrasis has been considered generally to be a rhetorical device in which one medium of art tries to relate to another medium by defining and describing its essence and form and in doing so relate more directly to the audience so now we will come directly to the poem so now i will open my laptop and try to read it from so i have opened my laptop and i am reading the poem now we will enter into the text about suffering they were never wrong the old masters so who are old masters the old masters are the painters the ancient painters about suffering they were never wrong so the poet is here saying that 
about the human feeling human suffering the old masters the old painters were never wrong they had the power to understand about the inner feelings of human being they had the power to understand to to feel what other human being is actually thinking so that's why old masters were perfectly capable of understanding others emotion feeling happiness sadness etc so about suffering they were never wrong the old masters how well they understood it's a human position so the old masters were able to understand the situation of a human about the position of a human so well they were perfect in understanding human emotions how it takes place while someone else is eating or opening a window or just walking dully along so while other normal person apart from the old masters the experience one so apart from the old masters the other living persons the other normal being they do not care about the lives of the other so most of the human being so most of the common human being common people do not think much about the suffering of others about the pains of others most of the people are quite indifferent about the suffering of the others so here the poet is actually trying to show that being a human they are not helping human so it's it's actually they are, the humanity has come to such end that a human being is not helping another human being when he is in problems or when he is in troubles so that's the situation poet is actually trying to demonstrate through this lines so he is actually trying to bring trying to demonstrate a, con a contrast that some people are suffering so others are quite passive here they are not bothering about the suffering of the another person some persons are so much indifferent they don't care about others problem so they are busy in their daily activities they are passing their life by doing their own task they don't want any trouble in their peaceful life the next line how when the aged are reverently passionately waiting for the miraculous birth there always must be children who did not specially want it to happen skating on a pond at the edge of the wood so when here the the phrase miraculous birth is actually referring to the birth of jesus christ so for the miraculous birth the old people were waiting passionately because they they realized that something big is going to happen someone is coming to save the world from its sinful atmosphere someone is going to save the humanity someone is going to rescue human being and the birth of jesus christ here has been described as miraculous birth because this is not a common birth this is not an ordinary birth so this birth is special the aged people realized that a great person is actually going to come to our world so when the aged person was thinking about the birth of jesus christ so rest of the stood rest of the children were not actually careful about that incident they were just playing skating near a pond and they were passing their time they do not bother about birth of the jesus christ so they are busy with their daily activities on a pond at the edge of the wood they never forgot 
that even the dreadful matterdom must run its course anyhow in corner some haunted spot where the dogs go on with their doggy life and the torturer's horse scratches its innocent behind on a tree so here the poet is trying to say that the birth of jesus christ was actually a challenge to the authority so the christian authority didn't welcome the birth of jesus christ they actually wanted to destroy jesus christ so to destroy jesus christ the unfortunately they were not aware about the child who was jesus christ so as they didn't knew about the particular children who is going to be jesus christ they just started to kill every child of that similar age almost they have killed a thousands of innocent baby of 2 years old so that they can kill jesus christ so in order to kill jesus christ they had finished a lot of innocent babies so when this butchery was going on in such a unnoticed corner in in when this butchery was going on in an unnoticed corner where the dogs were quite unaware about this dreadful event all the horse were quite unaware about this merciless event the next para in brugel's icarus for instance how everything turns away what leisurely from the disaster the plowman may have heard the splash the four second cry but for him it was not an important failure the sun shone as it had to on the white legs disappearing into the green water and the expensive delicate shape that must have seen something amazing a boy falling out of the sky had somewhere to get and to get to and sailed calmly on so here we can see the reference of peter brugel's icarus so the name of the peter brugel's painting landscape and the fall of icarus so here the poet is saying that we have already discussed the myth of icarus the poet is saying that who were walking near the sea where icarus fell down they are actually indifferent about the fall the plowman was doing his activity on the field he had no time to notice that what is going on so he had no time to lament on the death of icarus he actually didn't consider it that much important to give his no, to, to to give his concentration on that event so a ship was also passing by where icarus was falling but the ship passengers were so much busy so much busy to reach their destination that they they didn't stop their ship to observe that what had happened and how they could help they they were busy in their daily activities so much that they didn't actually stop to see the death of icarus so this gigantic fall this massive fall had not been considered by them as an important they were so much busy with their daily life that they don't have any time to listen to concentrate on others problem so the poet is actually trying to say that we as a human being become so much indifferent so much so much indifferent towards the problem of others that the basic nature of a humanity is getting deteriorated deteriorated day by day and we as a human being actually losing our the quality of humanity so for the sake of humanity we should come we should help one person who is in need of some help 
so for example we often see that when road accident happens we only see that the person who is bleeding only his family member is crying near or sitting beside him but the rest of the people they are just watching and they are just passing by with their cars they are so much busy with the daily activity that they don't have any time they don't have any any time to think to help other persons who is in need of their help they are busy with their daily life they are busy to go somewhere they are busy to go to their office they don't have the time even to help to hospitalize the injured persons so they actually don't want any extra trouble in their life they are so much in a comfortable place they don't want to give any trouble to themselves they actually want a peaceful life ignoring the major problem of our society so the poet the basic message of this poem is that we just need to help everyone who will be in problem that should be the basic nature of humanity so this is the main message of the wh ordens poem that the great artist the painters the old men were very much sympathetic towards the human being towards the problem of human towards the problem of other persons they could understand the feeling of other persons but nowadays human being is becoming so much selfish they don't bother about the problem of others they only think when they themselves fall in problem otherwise they don't have any time to notice anything who are in problem or who are in need of their help so thank you please share and subscribe if you like the video